Police Secretariat and U.S. President Donald Trump launches a scathing attack on the media again. Good afternoon, our sign language interpreter is Meresha Owiti and I am Akisa Wandera. Our EBC chairperson, Wafula Chebukati, this morning led his commission in meeting members of the Jubilee Secretariat. Amongst issues that were discussed were the IEBC involvement in the Jubilee Party nominations and a memorandum on issues Jubilee wished were addressed. Jubilee Party wants the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission to finance the nomination of its candidates according to the Election Laws Amendment Act 2016. IEBC can be requested by a party to conduct and supervise its nomination for presidential, parliamentary or county elections. Let's listen in to what happened in the morning. Of course, the main matter of interest is the forthcoming elections, 8th of August, and we discussed matters rotating around that. Uh, we congratulated them most sincerely for all the work they have done in the, re the mass voter registrations. Uh, we were able to address some of the areas in which we felt uh, very strongly before, and uh, we've been able to open a new chapter. But most important in our meeting was uh, how um, the IBC, according to the law, can uh, help us in our nomination process, which we would like to be free and fair. Um, we have agreed at the end of the meeting that we'll have a team of three from uh, Jubilee to meet with a team of three from the IBC so that this matter can be discussed further and uh, we look for common ground on the outstanding issues. The new commission is committed to delivering free, fair, credible and peaceful elections come on the 8th of August this year. And uh, in that spirit, that's why we are engaging the stakeholders, the political parties. As we came in office, we said that our door is open and uh, we welcome everybody who has ideas, views on the processes which we have undertaken. And this is part of that outreach activity of, of, of the new commission. And therefore, uh, we have uh, received a memorandum uh, from uh, Jubilee. We have also discussed a wide range of issues. I just want to confirm what uh, Mr. Tucho has said. The issue of the register is uh, one of the issues we discussed. As you all know, we have uh, the court has extended the, 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 the registration up to Sunday. Of the, that's 19th. On 19th, we expect that now the regions will bring us data of, of, of the people who have registered and the transfers. And thereafter, we shall commence the process of uh, cleaning up the register. And this has to go on until uh, on the, the 9th of May, we shall present that register uh, to the Kenyan people, the politicians, for verification purposes. And so this has to be done. The cleaning of the register involves, of course, removing the dead voters, uh, removing those uh, names of people who may have double registration. Uh, I, I know of a fact that uh, some people have been induced to transfer more than once. Those are the cases we shall ensure uh, don't come in the register. And uh, so the issue of the register is important. ABC Chairperson Wafula Chebukati there giving an address after meeting Jubilee Secretariat led by Raphael Tuju and our senior parliamentary reporter Patrick Amimo will be joining us in a bit to give us details on some of the outcomes from that particular engagement made between uh, IEBC commissioners and the chairperson of course led by the chairperson and uh, definitely the Jubilee Secretariat Amimo will be joining us later on in the program. Well, 
We also focus on another story that uh, touches on spying and just how safe your information on your mobile phone, the kind of communication you have is. And this afternoon, the Communication Authority of Kenya has denied uh, that it is planning to spy on the subscribers and uh, chairperson of CAK, Francis Wangusi, was uh, speaking to the media saying that there is no cause uh, for worry as uh, they are targeting counterfeit people and blacklisted people. Let's just listen in to some of the things uh, that were said there by CAK chairperson uh, Francis Wangusi. He made an address not too long ago. Only allows type approved and genuine mobile telecommunication equipment to be used in the country. The proliferation of counterfeit devices, often illegally imported and acquired by public, presents a serious challenge to mobile networks and subscribers. Besides compromising the optimization of mobile networks, such illegal devices degrade the quality of service available to users. The use of counterfeit devices poses a great security threat because such devices do not provide for effective identification and traceability of network transactions and users. Simboxing, which is used by unsubscripless people to illegally divert and terminate telecommunications traffic, not only go poses a security threat, but also leads to a loss of revenue to both mobile operators and the government through evasion of taxes. The implementation of this system is also intended to meet the requirements of the East African region under the Northern Corridor Integration Project's Heads of State Summit, which directed that each member state uh, deploys systems that cap illegal bypass and termination of telecommunication traffic within the context of one network area. At this point, I may pause to let you know that the other Northern Corridor member states have written to us on complaints about volumes of illegal traffic originating from Kenya going to their networks. And this is posing a very big challenge in the implementation of one network area, which is intended to have a free uh, call zone as if you are making a local, uh, a local call, uh, call in the whole of the Northern Corridor member states. It is against this background that the authority has continued to revamp the framework for management of illegal telecommunication devices in the country. Indeed, the acquisition of the device management system is in the second phase of the initial initiative that saw mobile operators switch off all counterfeit mobile devices in 2010. You may have heard of a one triple five a number which we were using to query the, 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 the authenticity of the phones that were on our networks. And that was our initial steps to eliminate and root out counterfeit phones on our network. And we met the collaboration of all uh, the uh, mobile service providers. And the, the database was, uh, was, was equipped with the GSM type approved forms. All right, that is an address made early on by Director General of the Communication Authority, Dr. Francis Wangusi. Let's now speak to uh, Stephen Mutoro, who is uh, uh, the Secretary General for the Consumers Federation of Kenya, COFEC, regarding the same. A very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for joining us. So these revelations that came up, they were the headlines of newspapers today morning on a plan to spy on the mobile subscribers does this make you uncomfortable? Uh, thank you, Linda. It obviously does. Uh, the reason why we communicate uh, through uh, mobile phones is that we have to ensure that uh, privacy is upheld. So we are actually per caps, and we find this as an erosion on the gains that have been made over time, uh, legally, morally, economically. I mean, you can see it in many ways that this is, uh, for me, an economic sabotage that uh, we should not entertain in the first place.
So we have seen the C uh, Communications Authority denying that uh, they are planning to spy, but they say they will be doing it for people suspected of wrongdoing, uh, numbers that have been blacklisted or counterfeit phones and whatnot. Um, is this okay if it's only the people they are suspecting of any wrongdoing, or do you feel like they will still be infringing on privacy? All right, apologies for that. We seem to have lost him, but that is the chairperson or the Secretary General, beg your pardon, of the Consumers Federation of Kenya saying they are perturbed by these latest revelations that the Communications Authority is planning to spy on mobile subscribers. But of course, uh, Director General of Communications Authority, Francis Wangusi, has denied these uh, claims. Let's go back to our top story, which is that particular meeting by the IEBC led by their chairperson, uh, Wafula Chabukati, meeting the Jubilee Secretariat and to let us in on more details on that engagement is our senior reporter Patrick Amimo joining us from our city center studios. Patrick, thank you for joining us. Um, are we likely to see the IEBC conducting the party primaries for Jubilee? Uh, thank you, Akisa. That was one of the subjects, uh, the main agenda for today's meeting when the Jubilee Secretariat met uh, with the IBC officials at their head office in Nairobi here. And uh, there is a challenge here in that uh, the law, in as much as the election, election law 2016 says that IBC should conduct uh, party primaries for political parties, uh, there is a lacuna in that uh, there is no way, it was, there are no provisions on how that process will be funded, who will fund that particular process. If IBC has to take that thing, it is a, it, uh, that uh, to engage in party primaries, it will be a partisan approach now. And IEBC is majorly funded by Treasury. So that is one of the challenges that uh, the IEBC team and Jubilee are looking into. And that's why they have at least uh, as, uh, set aside a, a six-member a six, a six six member team to ensure to assure members of a, fair, a free and fair nomination exercise in order to, uh, to prevent fallout after nominations. But then the law, the legalities that they have to, the legal landmines that they have to walk. The other issue is that in case of any party disputes, IEBC is supposed to arbitrate over, that, over, the, over the matter. Now, how will it be neutral if it participates in that particular process of nominating those, uh, those, um, those leaders for the, for the party, those will uh, be the flag bearers of Jubilee on various tickets from the county to national level? Then come and arbitrate over the dispute. So it is a very uh, it's a very tricky situation. And we've seen even the chairperson of the IBC, Wafula Chebukati, saying that uh, it is a matter they, they are really trying to look into. And also he says that it was his wish that uh, maybe IABC is kept off party primaries because it's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very uh, emotive issue and especially uh, trying to assuage uh, those uh, the, the disagreement that arises out of party primaries, especially on those parties that are regarded as main main political players or many parties now. In this case, in the Kenyan case, uh, looking at Jubilee and NASA or Cord. Akisa. All right, and uh, the head of the Jubilee Party Secretariat, Rafael Tuju, said that in his address that there were some outstanding issues that they were seeking IEBC to address. What are some of the of these issues that uh, they wanted addressed by the IEBC? Yeah, some of these things, as, as I did indicate, are to do with the, the, the legal. How do, they, how do they negotiate these uh, the, the, the legal landmine? I remember also, Code as, is on record indicating that I should uh, IEBC take that that uh, that route and conduct uh, uh, party primaries for Jubilee. Then they threaten to go to court, and if they go to court, uh, then uh, you know those are another another uh, another burden for IEBC to battle in the courts uh, instead of preparing for the August poll. So it is a very tricky situation for IEBC, and again the issue of fund will fund uh, these, uh, the IBC to conduct its, its, its primaries because IBC is funded by Treasury. And if, if the parties were to, to give IBC money to, 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 to carry out the polls, uh, then uh, uh, it's how will it uh, maybe account for, 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 for that money? There was a suggestion maybe if, I, if Jubilee could look for other alternative, uh, alternative people to carry out their, their party primaries, but uh, the head of Secretariat, Rafael Tuju, says uh, they'll cross the bridge when it comes to the, uh, when, they, the, when they get there. But Jubilee uh, team will be meeting IBC team on the, on the 28th of this month to see whether they can re reach a middle ground on whether the IBC will conduct their party primaries or they'll ask them to do it uh, on their own way, the way they, they've been doing it uh, uh, the way they did it in 2013 or or not but the other issue also that uh, jubilee raised was to do with the 
uh, the cleanup of the voter register. They are also keen to have the register cleaned ahead of the polls. And we saw the head of the secretariat also uh, giving a veiled warning to the areas considered to be allied to code or NASA, where he did indicate that uh, the code or, or NASA leadership has been attending uh, burials over the weekends, where they've also turned those uh, those burial sessions into political rallies, and is now indicating that uh, maybe the leadership should not be very should not be worried, or they, they, they should be ready to uh, swallow the bitter truth when the voter register is cleaned, and uh, they discover maybe that the, the the tyrant of numbers they thought they could be having after the vo the voter listing process comes to an end, when it's uh, whittled down to uh, maybe to uh, to, co to comply with the death rate in their counties. Akisa. Amima, thank you very much for joining us. Our senior uh, reporter there, Patrick Amimo, joining us from our city centre studios. Let's cross over quick and take a look at matters uh, education. A new report on public universities has revealed shocking levels of academic theft in some institutions in the country. The university's audit report released Thursday by Education Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi detailed how students and institutions conspire to go round the set standards of quality as part of the remedial action and to restore credibility to the country's higher education system, many degrees are set to be recalled and to further stop the rot. The report has outlined serious measures, including scrapping off the school-based programs. Let's take a look at some of the glaring dings of that report uh, quickly before we get into a discussion here. Let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the consequences that come out of this audit conducted by the Commission for University Education. Thousands of diplomas could be recalled. These are some of the consequences. So if you have a degree, you actually do have a reason to worry. Is it a credible degree? Is it fake? You will definitely find out in the coming days. Some universities offer non-accredited programs. And um, this has come out of this audit report by the Commission of University Education. And uh, these are programs that are not necessarily um, recognized by the Commission for University Education. And they seek seek to stop it, one of them being the school-based degree programs that have been stopped immediately. This mostly happens to, say, teachers who go to the university after uh, on, during the holiday period, so this has been stopped immediately. So if you are going through this program, you seriously need to... Uh, um, to need to contact your uh, institution. Executive degrees have also been suspended and uh, papers have been recalled and to this effect those with PhDs after executive degrees are to be barred from teaching in Kenyan universities. This is definitely going to affect a lot of people. Most honorary degrees may also be recalled from this particular audit report and some completing undergraduate studies uh, that have been done under nine months those who got into universities with P1 certificates, bridging courses, or less than C+, may lose their degrees or university slots. So if you studied your degree for about nine months or got in uh, with a P1 certificate or bridging courses, you might really lose that degree. And to help us dissect this issue, joining me in studio now is uh, Professor Tom Odiambo, a lecturer at the University of Nairobi. Thank you very much for joining us here on Newsdesk. Quickly, what does this mean for Kenyan universities, this audit report? I mean, this is good. Um, for the first time in so many years, we have a situation where somebody is actually looking at the higher education in a critical way. This has never happened in so many years since I was an undergraduate student till I came back to this country after studying abroad mm -hmm. for, for my two degrees. And I started teaching. Mm -hmm. Everybody says there's the rot in the education system, mm -hmm. but nobody actually pinpoints where the rot is. Mm -hmm. And even this report hasn't even started to scratch where the rot is. Mm -hmm. The rot is much bigger than the report six. So this is a welcomed to. move? It's a welcome move, but it's really, like I've said, it's just the beginning of scratching of the rot. Mm -hmm. The rot is deeper mm -hmm. than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do we expect to see in the coming days? And do you think this particular um, way of doing things that uh, Dr. Fred Matiangi is looking at will lead completely clean up our education system if he keeps at it? Well, I mean, I, I don't necessarily support the way he does things, mm -hmm. but I'm probably happy at the likely consequences of what he's done. Mm -hmm. I would really have wanted a situation where there's a lot more engagement with the teaching staff, the support staff, the so-called stakeholders, the parents. I would ask you a very simple question. Mm. The, the, the thousands of parents in Kenya who send their children to universities, mm. when were they consulted over this? Mm. I, I, don't, I don't remember 
anybody coming to the university actually and interviewing the staff, mm -hmm. I don't remember. They will say, those who have issued this report, the Commission for University Education and the Minister, will say that the universities were involved that some members of staff were interviewed. Mm -hmm. But I'm not so sure. I've been teaching at the University of Nairobi for almost eight years now. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any one time when somebody came over to me and said, you've been teaching literature for so many years. Mm -hmm. What do you think is wrong here? Mm -hmm. But let's for the moment say that this is the beginning probably yeah. of the restructuring of higher education, which is really a good thing.